Son. Thank you. Look at you. You're a hero. We heard you were awarded a Purple Heart. Your mom and daddy would have been real proud. Thank you, sir. No, ma'am. This was my home before the war. You're one of the Locke family? Yes, ma'am. We're farming this land now. I understand. Sorry for the interruption. I was just driving a car. I didn't even have a gun. You don't understand how hard it was with Mama sick. I had to get out. I couldn't breathe. They said I could go to Mama's funeral. But I'd have to be in chains. And I couldn't do that to her. No, sir. No contact with the prisoner. Time's up, Locke. You disown me? No? You're the only family I got, Travis. My brother's 17, Mr. Cates. Shouldn't there be some leniency? No, sir. Not a chance. Travis is a good boy. 
He just he made a bad decision, and I wasn't here to help him. I'm sorry about your kid, brother. We thank you for your service over there. Thank you, Mr. Cates. If I were you, I'd focus on what I was going to do now this war is over. Yes, sir. like water everywhere else, boy. It's wet. You feeling for life in that river? Uh, it's just an old habit. I didn't mean to spook you. You got that look about you. Man, it's ready to duck down. I'd say you was in the war. Was you? Yeah, I was. Fishing's best from the bend. Hmm. Help yourself to the worms. Thanks. I saw you coming a long way off. You had company. And I saw a man and a woman walking beside you. That wasn't me, sir. I'm alone here. It was you. Man was lame. Woman was awfully pretty. Petite little lady. Sounds like you describing my folks. They died. Oh, that's awfully sad. Look, look, you got your one. <laughs> Uh. You say you see my folks? How's that? Uh, it's, it's just a gift you come to me five years ago. Seeing the other side. Well, I don't believe in ghosts. Neither do I. Only angels. Oh, gee. will you look at that? Thank you. Hmm. <sighs> You just wandering around? 
You're going somewhere. Well, I guess I'm wandering. Just looking for a sign that tells me to stop. But you're just walking willy-nilly. You ought to go over to those mountains there. Just over the ridge. There's a nice little valley. Born and raised there. Awfully nice people. Good fishing, too. There's a little lake over there. The locals call it the Lake of No Fish. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> it's got the biggest bass you ever saw. I hooked him once. Haunt me like the devil. You got to take your time with him. You got to aggravate him so. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen fish like that. <laughs> Must be as big as Jonah's whale by now. Well, I guess we best be getting home. Thank you for your hospitality, Noah Locke. You said you'd see my folks, my ma, my pa. You still see them? Bright as dead. And there are others, too. Your army buddies. You don't want to lose them, either. What you want to lose is that cloak of grief about your shoulders. You did your best to save them. You go on over to that valley. Try to catch my fish. If you do, you tell him, Hoke Moore has been thinking about him a long, long time. Old Hope Maw told me about you. I'll see you later.
Welcome. You wouldn't be lost now, would you? Well, I've never been here before, so I guess I am. Looks like we got us a wandering sheep. Where you from? Asheville. I had a cousin live there. Name of Wally Mayfield. You know him? No, sir. He didn't miss much. <laughs> you serve in the war? I did. Europe or the Pacific? Europe. What outfit? 42nd Infantry. Whitlow Mayfield. And I'm not walking behind the plow, I'm the sheriff of this county. Marshal, here's my deputy. Pleasure. Howdy. Howard Reynolds. Says Matthew. My name's Noah Locke. What you doing with yourself these days, Noah Locke? I pick up an odd job here and there, but mostly I do me some fishing. Fishing? Well, if you come for the fishing contest, friend, I'm afraid you're a bit early. I don't know nothing about no fishing contest. We have a fishing contest here in about two weeks. It costs two dollars to get in. It draws a crowd, and we wind up with a little money for the school. You could walk away with $20. Give Littleberry some competition. Yeah, that'd be Littleberry Davis. He's won our contest the last uh, ooh, five, six years in a row by my count. Six. Six. You're a fisherman, tell you what. You go down to that river there and catch me a mess of them river cats for a sundown, I'll give you a dime for every fish big enough to fry. My boy likes catfish. Uh, don't let him bait you, friend. You not knowing the river this time of day, I'd say you'd be wasting your time. Oh, I'll do it. All right, to get to our house, take that road there, I'll pass the meadow. So you see a little gray house. Yes, sir. Thank you. Bill, been here five minutes. Already you got you some business. And it's four. Oh, you got a smorgasbord there. <laughs> Ma'am, Taylor, um, we captured us here a Noah Locke, traveling fisherman, if you can believe that. Is that so? Marjorie, you take care. I will. This is my cousin, Taylor Bowers. And if he don't have what you want, he just go ahead and try to sell you something else. <laughs> Some folks are born again Christians. Taylor here is a born again talker, worse than I am. Yeah, and that's going some. Now, how can I help you? What you need, son? Some sardines, some canned tuna. And that'd put a hole in your fishing story. Well, yes, it would. I'll just have a bag of coffee, a soap bar, and a shirt if you got it. Will chambray do? That'd be fine, thanks. Eleanor. Taylor. Whitlow. Afternoon, Eleanor. Anything I can get for you? Oh, I know where everything is. All right, then. Now, don't you go raising prices on our friend here. He's an army man, like my boy. You know you're the only one to cheat around here, cousin. Nice to meet you, sir. Same here. You really make a living fishing? Well, now, that depends on what you call a living. I eat a lot of fish. <laughs> You know of any jobs around town? <laughs> I got one right here. You see those two fools yakking over there? They're supposed to be painting this store. You witness even one foot of pine board painted out there when you walked up? Coffee's right behind you. Eleanor, are you finding everything all right? Well, now, what is that? What is that there in your ear? Well, now look at that, a nickel. You want some candy? Yes. Chocolate? Well, I can wait my turn. Oh, no, no, that's fine. Please, go ahead. This is Noah Locke. I got it right, didn't I? You did. And this is Eleanor Chatwin. She's taking orders if you got a taste for catfish. Oh, no. Thank you. We don't eat much fish. <laughs> oh, well. You 
You take care of yourself. Thanks. That's a fine woman. All righty. This is a dollar fifty. And the uh, nickels worth of penny candy for my friend here. Hey there, Matthew. Yeah, let's see. What do you think? Orange slices today, or Boston beans, or mm, jelly beans. Yes, ma'am. My name's Noah Locke. I'm Ada Reynolds. Matthew told me he'd met a new friend today. Look at that. Where'd you catch them, River? Yes, sir. Well, this time of day. That makes these miracle fish. They're just the right size for pan frying, too. Give me and I'll start supper. Why don't you tell Mr. Noah to come to church with us on Sunday? Yeah. How long are you staying? I don't know, sir. Well, come to church on Sunday. It's only one in the valley. Church of the Resurrected Christ. No matter how you were raised, everybody's welcome. Thank you, sir. Come on, Matthew. We're gonna feast tonight. Sleep well, Granny? Got some trouble there? 
You know that fisherman? Yes, ma'am. You mind if I have a look? Rifle. She needs to be shot. Yes, ma'am. Mm. You want some meat from it, I can butcher it for you. All right. I brought you dinner. Well, there's no need. If you don't, I'll feel even worse, waylaying you on your way to church. Oh, I wasn't going nowhere. Just thinking about it. Thank you. <sighs> Shouldn't have been a surprise, her dying. She was awfully old. Still, it shook me. You were in the war? Yeah, I was. My late husband, Boyd, was too. I'm sorry to hear that. What was it like, the war? It's not something you can get out of your mind. And there's no making sense of it either. Well, I guess a lot of things don't make sense. Thank you for your help. Please, just a few bites. I want my chocolate. Well, I thought you'd left. I went out an hour ago and you were gone. I just went to the pump to wash up. Who's that? Forgive my manners. You'd think I didn't have any. Come in, Mr. Locke. Meet Boyd's grandmother, Mrs. Beatrice Chapman. Ma'am. Granny isn't feeling all that well today. She won't give me my chocolate. <sighs> Granny lives on chocolate bars. Maybe I ought to write the candy company and give him a testimonial. Well, it's getting dark. I'll drive you home. Oh, there's no need. My camp's not far. Where are you? I'm up the road at the lake. The fishing cabin? Uh, no, ma'am. Just near it. Well, why don't you use it? Well, I, I didn't know who to ask. You ask me. I'll be back shortly, Granny. Ma'am. husband shot himself here. 
Not in the cabin, if that's any difference to you. I thought he died in the war. Boyd came home without a scratch on him. But he was changed. Now, why would he do that, Mr. Locke? Why would a man go through a war and come home and kill himself? Boyd used to come here and stay the night, just to be by himself. I think everything's here. The lamp, the cot. A man named Arch Wheeler built this cabin. And he died right there in that chair. Boyd said he used to come up here and drink with Arch's ghost. He was always trying to scare me. But people say this place is haunted. Yeah, you hear stories. Lights on the water. Hunting dogs whimpering like they've seen a ghost. I'm a chatterbox, aren't I? I don't think Granny says a dozen words in a week. Makes me too hungry for talk. Good night. Good night, ma'am. Thank you. For what? I'm trying to thank you for taking care of my poor cow. So don't thank me. How old are you, Mr. Locke? I'm 28. Well, I'm just four years older, so don't call me ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. I won't say it on a trade. You don't call me mister. All right. No. See any ghosts, you holler. Dear Travis, since I last wrote you, I've come to a place called the Valley of Light. A fisherman by the name of Hoke Moore sent me here. He claims that the biggest bass he's ever seen lives in this lake. And I know now that's no fishtail. Good morning, fish seller. Morning. Come by wondering if you still need somebody to do some painting. Oh, you bet. Just look at this place. I'll pay $20 for the whole job. I'll supply the sandpaper and paint. Oh, yes, sir. That's a deal. Right. Looky here. Now, you get a fish order. You go fish. Paint when you can. Yes, sir. You're going to be good for business. Howard was bragging at church about all those catfish you got here. Howard's son, that boy. Matthew, that's Howard's grandson. But he and Ada keep him. Boy's mama passed away quite a few years ago. Matthew's daddy hasn't been around since. 
They say he's working in Tennessee. He sends that boy money, but we never see him. He have not talk, cause uh, his grandma said that uh, he talks to her. He just says she hears him with her heart. <laughs> she does, that's a fact. But that boy never spoke a word. What the hey, Taylor? You giving our jobs away? He's the fisherman Howard's talking about. That's so. Name's Noah Locke. Pivo Teasley. Moody Goodhouse. The third. Pleasure meeting you, boys. People are gonna come around to get a look at this man while he's working. You hear that word? Working? That'd be a foreign tongue to you, boys. Digging for bait. Want to help? Hey, look at this. I saw a flock of robins here. That's how I knew to look for earthworms. And after a storm, now that's a good time, too. You find yourself a rain-soaked field. There you go. <laughs> you found yourself a good one. up there, the biggest bass I've ever seen. But, well, he ain't ready to be caught yet. Mr. Hoke Moore told me about this valley. You know Mr. Moore? He said they're good people here. He's right. Ghosts haven't chased you off yet. I don't want to make a mess inside. Looks like you're making a mess up top of your head. Sit down. I used to cut boards hair. Well, my mama used to cut mine. Getting a haircut was one of the few times my husband would sit still long enough for me to talk to him. I don't know why it was so hard for him to just Sit and listen. No, I suppose some people are just that way. Don't you get tired moving around place to place? I don't really know what else to do. Don't you miss your home? Family? 
Oh, my folks passed on. I got a brother, though, Travis. He, uh, fell in with some bad company and wound up in prison. So maybe I'm just waiting for him to get out. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Is that from the war? Must have been terrible. Hope that's all right. Not as good as the barber might have done it, but. <laughs> well. <laughs> it's much better than I could have done. Thank you. up some paint. Big like a mule. Sounds like a tall tale, don't it? You know, you're the only friend I ever had where I did all the talking. I bet you can say my name, though, can't you? Noah? You can say Noah, can't you? That's it, you got it. Like that. <laughs> Looking at him <them> all. <laughs> well, I see you got enough paint on yourself. You managed to get any on the store? You done real good. <laughs> How's the celebrity? You can just ignore Moody and Pivo. How's it going, fisherman? Just fine till now. The way Taylor was talking, sounds like you don't even need a hook to catch a fish, boy. <laughs> hey, you catch us six river cats piece. Before sundown today, we'll give you 10 cents a fish. But uh, you come up short, we keep everything you catch for free. 12 catfish by sundown. Good Lord, boys, what kind of sucker bet is that? He makes that dozen. It'll cost you a quarter of fish. Quarter of fish? <laughs> Shoot, Little Bear Davis ain't even that good. Little Bear's the best I ever seen. Little Bear couldn't bait Noah's hook. What do you think, Matthew? Take that bet. Your fisherman's about to catch me a free dinner. <laughs> I'll bet you three dollars he makes it. You got a bet. No bream, no bass, no trap, no crappie. Good. <laughs> Damn the rules. What's he doing? Washing the worm slime off his hands. Something you boys ought to do once in a while. Wash up a little.
don't seem to be in much of a hurry, does he? <laughs> <laughs> it's a cat. Fourteen inches of place. That ain't but one. It's gonna play out after three or four. Why don't he hook no sucker fish or crappie? Hey, you got some sort of secret catfish bait on there? <laughs> <laughs> you sure that boy knows how to count? One more time now, Noah. Come on. Might as well give up now, fisherman. Don't listen to him. You put up a good fight, Noah Locke. No doubt about that, but 11 ain't 12. <laughs> you ain't gonna make it. Maybe you fish that hole clean. tonight. But you owe Noah here three dollars. <laughs> and another three for Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel good. Hey, why don't we drive over to Hayesville? Get something to eat. Treats on me. I got money to burn. Ada's waiting at home for us. Yeah, thank you, Taylor, but maybe some other. Come on, I'll give you a ride, Noah, unless you want to swim home. <laughs> You're probably right. Uh, windows to close up. All right. Well, I owe you all the supper. I won't forget it. Uh huh. I feel good. Right here is fine. Well, thanks for the ride. You know what? I got something for you. About Hook and Barbo. Thanks for your help today, partner. Oh, that's nice. 
Well, you're welcome. <laughs> Bye now. We should have dragged that poor boy home for supper, too. Everybody needs somebody, Matthew. Who are the prophets? Are they royal born? No. Do they inherit the office of prophet? No. The prophets are called directly by God, and through them, God's will is revealed. What does the greatest of prophets, Isaiah, have to say? He begins overwhelmed with the wickedness and corruption of the people. Through him, God cries out in anguish. Through him, God cries out in heartbreak. Dear Travis, Hoke Moore said I'd find good people here. He was right. I can't explain it, but I sleep through the night now for the first time since the war. Stay hopeful, and if you can, trust that God has a plan for you. Your brother Noah. Aren't you so for sore eyes? We have a special occasion? No, I just thought I'd stop by, put in an order for fish. I thought you didn't care for fish. Tastes change. How many you want me to catch for you? No, for the four of us, plus Howard, Ada, and Granny. You catch them, I'll cook them. <laughs> we, let's go fishing. All right, you only got till five o'clock. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be a night to remember. I came out here right after Boyd got home. I forgot why. He made me stay for supper. <laughs> oh, I'll never forget that meal. That woman can cook. And Boyd. Seemed okay to us. 
There must have been something powerful troubling him, see. Yeah, he's probably sick at heart from the things he'd seen. But why he'd leave Eleanor? He just about killed the woman. Hard thing to be left behind. I've fished with Taylor. I've never seen a man better at drowning worms. Pay no attention. <laughs> It's just been too long since Granny and I have had people over to the house. Something we ought to do more often. <laughs> All right, everyone, take a seat. Granny. I think Matthew wanted to sit next to you. Uh, that's fine. I want to sit next to him. How about this one, buddy? Eleanor, there you go. All right. Howard, why don't you sit at the head? You sure. Well, thank you, Taylor. Hmm. I'll take it from here. All right, then. I'd like to say a few words of grace, if I may. Well, we've got to take hands, Granny Chatwin. We'd greatly appreciate it if you'd give us your blessing and help to loosen up our tongues so we can talk about everybody we know who's not here. <laughs> and forgive us beforehand for what we say. And sweet Lord, we thank you for this bounty of food and fellowship. Amen. 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 Pass the hush puppies. May I serve you, Miss Chatwin? Oh, no, sir. I'm waiting for the chocolate. Chocolate, Lord, right to the dessert. Will somebody please give Granny the chocolate? Actually, I went to the store. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Brought you one more for good measure. Granny, you will never sleep tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. So, Noah, you just been traveling since the war's end? Fishing? Yes, ma'am. How many states you seen? Traveled rivers, mostly. Um, the Cumberland and the, uh, the Cinch, the Hiawassee, the, uh, the Tennessee, and such, a few others. Do you have a favorite place? Well, you got a pretty place here, in this valley. Well, maybe you'll just have to win it here. Yes, ma'am. Would you like some hush puppies? <laughs> What is that? What is that there behind your ear? Hmm? All right. We're going home. But if only no one stopped talking. You see what I mean about him? He talks all the time. You can't hardly ever get him to stop. You leave him alone, Taylor Bowers, or next time you won't get invited. Next time? Oh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> <laughs> night, night. Good night. Good night, night Miss Chatwin. Night now. All right, let's go in. If you just got me a second invite to Eleanor C's, you good luck indeed. Even if I would like to kick you in the gut, the way she lights up when you're around. Good night, Taylor. Thanks for the ride. Noah, you watch out for ghosts. It's haunted up here. Go on and get out of here, Ooh. old codger. <laughs>
Yes, ma'am? Did you just call me ma'am? Oh, uh, no, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. I brought you some breakfast, but uh, if you don't want to open the door, I guess I'll just leave it out here on the porch. No, 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 I'm, I'm coming. Hi. You, you want some coffee? No, thank you. But you go ahead, have it with your breakfast. And grab yourself a fork. Sure. If I have coffee in the morning, I'm jittery all day. You know, my sides ache this morning. I laughed so hard last night. Yeah, that Taylor, he's, uh, he's one of a kind. Yes, he is. But it's you who made me happy. I'll fix that for you before I go. Well, thank you. I'll see you later, Mr. Locke. Eleanor? Yes? I went by your house last night, but you had already headed for bed. I saw your light go out. Well, I turned my light out, but I didn't go to sleep for a while. What were you going to do if the light had been on? Well, I would have asked you if I could sit on your porch with you. And what would we do on the porch? Would we talk? You saying two words and me saying 20? What I personally witnessed is nothing short of made-to-order fishing. He didn't get so much as a nibble from a bream or an eel or a horny head. Nothing but catfish. These stinky bait? Earthworms. These are fancy real? Nothing better than a cane pole. I'd pay up front just to see it again. <laughs> He's gonna give Little Barry Davis such a fit at that <laughs> fishing contest. <laughs> I seen Little Barry in Whiteville yesterday. He says all this talk about your mystery fisherman is one fat fish tail. Ooh, sounds <laughs> like Little Barry's got the jitters. He's shaking in his waders. Well, I lay down $10 right now, says that Noah Locke wins that take-home prize. Hi, everyone. Afternoon, Afternoon Miss Chatwin. Chatwin. Afternoon, Eleanor. Don't <laughs> you two ladies look lovely? Granny came by for her chocolate. Oh, come on right in, Granny. That last cat no car was so big, they had to pull it out with Moody's mule. And when my mule had a heart attack, we got Pivo's tractor to burn out the engine. Where's mine? Mm -hmm. I better pay for the candy. I made a little present to Granny. No, sir. When we settled up, she gave me the kiss. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Chatwin. Taylor. I think Granny's cleaned you. Uh, Matthew's missing. Ada hasn't seen him since lunch. I'll go look for him. I'll get Granny home and call him. We'll be glad to help. I, I, hold up a second. We'll, we'll help you. Can we go in the room? Well, we're, uh, we should probably check down that road. We'll take it down, down this, this road. He's never been gone this long. It's just not like him.
How far did you get? The railroad bridge. Yeah. Then between us, we scouted seven miles of river. From the trestle to Bower Bridge. So you didn't go to the river then? John's Creek. <laughs> Whitlow's here. And down at the county courthouse, I just got the news. Hate to think of you worried sick all day long, Ada. I appreciate that. Hey, girl. Howard, we're going to find the boy. I'm going to need one of his shirts. I'll go get it. Got it? She got it. All right, girls. Find him now. Find him! Let's go, boys! They'll find him, Ada. up there. I told Matthew that ghost up there. He's scared to death of that place. It's best to check. I'll drive you up. We will find him. All right, let's go walk that trick. Come on. Come on, girl. Matthew! I got a bad feeling about this. I really do. Taylor, this is fine right here. This is fine. I'm gonna drive the roads. All right. You hear him, girl? What you hear? Easy. Good mm. girl, you keep listening. Anything? The ground's cold. We lost his scent. I thought I'd wait here just in case Matthew called out. The dogs would hear him. What do you think? We got a lot of people looking for him. People who know the place is here pretty good. It bothers me we ain't found nothing. Well, I'm just heading over to Ada's, make some breakfast. You come and eat. No, oh, that's all right. No, 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 I won't take no for an answer. I'll have breakfast on the table at first light. All right.
nobody goes up there anymore. Not with all them ghosts. Lord, I feel bad about this. If we just find out more. <sighs> just happened, that's all. You know, Howard's been asking for you. I told him about a fish in that lake. He went to catch it. It weren't your fault, no. Me and my wife know that. Matthew had a good time knowing you. God. He's been uh, missing his daddy a lot, awful lot lately. Gave him something he didn't have. <laughs> Man. That lake is cursed. First Arch Wheeler down alone up there, and then Boyd Chapman. By his own hand. Now Matthew Reynolds. A helpless little lamb. If it were up to me, we'd blow up that lake. If you blow up that lake, you might as well blow up the mountain. Somebody freezes or falls off that mountain every year. And after you blow up the mountain, you best go ahead and blow up the roads and the railroads too. Well, then I'm thinking it might help Howard if we tidy up the yard a little bit. There's bound to be a lot of people coming by when they hear about Matthew. I'll do it. I'll, I'll wash and wax his car. He's gonna want to clean for the funeral. Oh, Lord, that boy. Pretty much their life. Yes, he was. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. Gracious God, we thank thee for those we love, but see no more. Receive into thy arms your servant Matthew, and grant that increasing in knowledge and love of you he may go from strength to strength in service to your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. 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 Have you been able to reach your son yet? I know, he don't know yet. Uh, let the message for him to call us, but who knows when he'll get that. Hmm. Well, we're gonna put off the fishing. No, too much work already done, people coming in from all over. I know. We know the school needs the money. Taylor's worried about you.
You're leaving? I should have come up here as soon as they said he ran off. I should have known. You're not a mind reader. You didn't know what that child was going to do. Not been for me. That boy would be at the store right now having an orange crush with Howard and Ada. All we can do is love people with a whole heart while we have the chance. And you love that boy well. why this world has to shatter to pieces. When I first saw you, I thought an angel might have sent you. I've been alone so long, I can make up things in my head pretty easy. All of us were hoping for a sign, aren't we? A sign that we have a purpose, that we're being guided towards it. Well, I've never seen that sign myself. Maybe you've been that sign for others. A sign for Matthew. I was hoping a sign for me. away the answer, Noah. Will that keep you a pace ahead of the pain? Maybe if you keep walking, you'll find a valley where no one has ever suffered a broken heart. But I wager to say would be a loveless place. People here come out to see no fish. <laughs> Look at little Mary. <laughs> Trying to figure out which one of these people's Noah.
All right, everyone, listen here now. The fishing starts at the shot. Early casters get a half hour penalty. Contest ends at two by my watch. Oh, fish fry at five. All right. Fish fry starts at five. Davis caught the first fish. We all would have caught ten by now. Let's weigh him up!
If I trusted, even for a moment, in those signs you believe in, I would have tried to be one for you. Noah. Sure, where yet? Are you the one they called Noah? I am. I was looking for you at the contest. Name's Little Bear Davis. You live in town? Yes, sir. I never stay for the fish fry. I come for the prize, not the party. Where are you headed? Nowhere in particular. Well, if you have a chance, you ought to stop by South Lake. That's where I live. We got some pretty good bass in it. I hear you're staying up at Arch Wheeler's place. No fish up there. <laughs> Old fella always talking about this monster fish he had seen in that lake. Said it was big as a barn. So I go there with two or three of my boys just to see for myself. We stayed the night there. Only bite I got was from mosquitoes. <laughs> Made old Hoke mad the jaw he took about that phantom fish. <laughs> Mr. Hoke Moore? Yeah, that's right, old Hoke. Well, now, he's the one that told me about this place. Where do you meet him? I met him in Taunton. Yeah, yeah. Hoke died in Taunton. Family had him buried there, even though he lived most of his life here in the valley. Mr. Moore died? Yeah, about five years ago. Sorry to be the one to tell you. Now, Hogue was quite a fisherman. He was the best I ever seen. When he was buried, Pivo Teasley said they ought to put a catfish in the coffin with him so he would feel at home. <laughs> You don't look too good. You look like you just seen a ghost. Oh, no, sir. I don't believe in ghosts. Maybe angels. Thank you. Excuse me. Hey, driver! Travis, 
For a year, I traveled these roads in a hope I could stay a pace ahead of the grief. Here I stopped, was overtaken, and left behind with a certainty that we do have purpose in this world. In this valley, cross the Nantahala River, follow the Hiawassee West. When you see the bridge, you're almost home.